Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video today, I want to give you some tips for how to manage a remote sales team using Asana. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please leave me a comment below. And if you need more help with Asana, check out the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting services, including how to sign up to my new master Asana course and coaching program where you can get help with uh, from me uh, via private sessions, group coaching, and I have my new flagship Asana course as well. So let's get into this video. And I really want to break this up into two parts. In terms of managing a remote sales team, I think there's two kind of key considerations. Firstly is kind of tracking, what is my team doing? Just, I want visibility of what individual people are doing uh, and just the different teams, what are the projects they're working on. I just want to kind of see what's going on. And the other thing is communication. So if you are working remotely, uh, how are you going to communicate and how does Asana factor into that? So let's start with the visibility and kind of work tracking component. So there's a few different ways that you can track people's work in Asana. When you've got your project set up, and by the way, I'm going to assume you've kind of set up your account a little bit. If you need help with that, I've got tons of other videos on YouTube about that. So I'm, I'm kind of assuming that people who are watching are already, you know, a little bit uh, set up on Asana. But you've got your project set up, you've assigned work to your team. One of the easiest ways to just quickly see what is Haley doing, you know, someone on my team, is I can come up here, I can type Haley, I can click her name, and I can see her tasks here. I can just basically see anything assigned to Haley uh, with her name on it here. So that's a great way to be able to see at an individual level what a specific person is working on. Obviously, the caveat to this is that you can only see tasks that um, that you have visibility to see. So if they are working in a private project that you do not have access to, you wouldn't see those tasks. So you maybe aren't getting the complete picture, obviously just something to keep in mind. Another feature that is really useful if you are on the premium plan or higher is you do have some reporting options. So up, in, up here in the search, you can click on advanced search and you can create a report and say, let's find tasks assigned to Haley or Angeline. And I wanna only look at tasks that are incomplete and I want to say due within the next, uh, actually no, let's actually let's just do that. So I will generate this report here. And then to just visually make this a little bit easier, I'm going to sort this by assignee. And actually I have this exact report here in my reports. I call it team workload. So I'll go to that now. It's basically the exact same report. And so this is kind of like that other view that we just looked at. It's tasks assigned to each of these people, um, but it's just kind of grouped them all into one page using this reports feature. So actually, this is a screen that I use quite a lot when I've assigned tasks to different people. I can basically just, it's an easy way for me to see what each person is working on. The third feature that I wanted to explain, and this is for users on the business plan or higher, so that's Asana's third uh, kind of tier, is the workload feature. So when you have business, you get access to portfolios here. So I've created one called clients. And then we have the workload tab. And so what this is showing me, if I scroll back in time a little bit, is for each of these two employees, basically I can see their workload. So I can see Paul here has some tasks going on. I can see Jarvis up here, he's got some tasks. In fact, he's actually got a little red section on his graph here, which tells me that he's over capacity. And how Asana has calculated that is, this is looking at the uh, capacity settings for this particular portfolio. So I've set the uh, capacity, if I edit here, for Jarvis to be 20 hours per week. I'm 40 hours. And because some of the tasks here, this is a 20 hour task, and he also has this uh, five hour task, for this particular day, he's actually got too much work to do. So this is sort of the most powerful feature that Asana has for us to be able to see the workload of our team. And as you can see, it's much more visual than the report that I showed you before. It really does help to answer that question of how much work is each of my team, uh, each person on my team, how much are they doing? Who's over capacity and who actually has more capacity? So I might be able to reallocate some work from Jarvis to Paul potentially. So that's the first part of this video and this discussion is just seeing what people are working on. Um, so just to recap, you can view an individual person's tasks. You can use reports to find what people are looking at. Or if you're on business, you can use this workload feature to um, very visually see how much work each person on your team currently has on their plate. Obviously, with all of these features, the quality of the reports here and what we're seeing is dependent on using Asana properly. 
you know, it's not gonna magically solve the problem for you. And maybe there's things that they're doing that aren't recorded in Asana. So that really becomes an issue then of adoption and team training, which if you need help with, please reach out to me. Um, but your team have to be using Asana correctly. If they have loads of their work not in Asana, then this workload potentially isn't telling the true picture. It's only showing us what's in Asana. So something to think about as well. So the second part to this video then is around communication. Obviously managing a remote team, communication is a very important um, factor. How do we keep up to date with what's going on? How are we gonna communicate as a team? So if it is your first time going remote or if you've recently gone remote, um, think about making some, having a conversation with the team, what are the different channels you are going to use? You know, besides Asana, which um, I'll get into, you know, with things like email and Slack and Zoom, there's loads of different ways that you can communicate. And you wanna have a think about when are we gonna use Zoom? Like when, do, when can we justify getting on a meeting? When is an email good enough? And when can we use just Asana? So that's just a conversation that you will need to have as a team. It's kind of defining when each channel is appropriate. What I find with clients using Asana is that if you're talking about a task or a project, um, you should be doing that in Asana. So when I'm delegating tasks to Angeline, for example, I we, we never use email. I, I've given her the task in Asana, so if she has questions, she will ask me in Asana. And uh, where I see that is up here in my inbox. So this inbox, this is the notification area of Asana. I can see tasks that have been recently updated. So here, if I click on this, Andrew and I have been having a discussion down here about this pricing table. We've been communicating back and forward. So we haven't had to exchange a single email. And the really nice thing is that our conversation is clearly documented on the actual task that Andrew is working on. Uh, here's another one. So Angeline was given this task to be completed. She then said it was done. She gave me the link here. Great, really quick little conversation. Um, so basically the best practice, in my opinion, is if you are talking about a task or a project with your team, you should be having that conversation in Asana. It's just more efficient than trying to do it in email if you've already got the tasks or projects in Asana. It's a really nice way to communicate back and forward. And for tracking purpose purposes, to be able to go back and see those conversations really easily is uh, saves a lot of time as well. Now where Asana is a little bit limited is for things like real-time discussion. If you want to talk to somebody kind of more instantaneously, that's where something like maybe Slack is better because you can kind of type back and forward in real time where Asana tends to be more asynchronous or even something like Zoom. You know, sometimes you just need to have a, in, an in-depth discussion and um, you need to get you know on a call face-to-face -face and share screens and just talk to someone. So. Uh, have that conversation with the team. Work out when is Zoom appropriate, when do we need to have those more detailed discussions. Uh, if we're just asking quick questions about tasks, we can do that here in Asana. So I hope this video has been useful. Uh, if you are working remotely and you need to find better ways to track what your team is doing and keep up to date with what's going on, um, please let me know if you have any questions about what I've discussed in this video. Please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.